28 and 20 seconds a.m. Central Time, 9.28 and 20 seconds p.m. in Baikonur. You are looking live at Launch Site 1, Yuri Gagarin's launch pad at the Baikonur Cosmodrome, where human spaceflight began more than 58 years ago. A team of launch controllers is watching over all systems aboard the Soyuz rocket, which is fully fueled and ready for launch. No issues have been tracked throughout the day, which began with fuel and oxidizer loading in the Soyuz booster, about 6.28 a.m. Central Time, 4.28 p.m. in Baikonur. Fueling of the Soyuz booster was completed about two hours later. Along with the flight control teams around the world supporting the International Space Station program here in Mission Control Houston, a team is watching over the Expedition's 60 crew and space station systems, preparing to support the increase in crew size later today from 3 to 6, with the addition of NASA astronaut Drew Morgan, European Space Agency astronaut Luca Parmitano, and Russian cosmonaut and Soyuz commander Alexander Skvortsov. This trio is about to begin a planned four-orbit, six-hour flight to the International Space Station with docking scheduled at 5.51 p.m. Central Time, 6.51 p.m. Eastern Time. Their Soyuz MS-13 spacecraft will be docking later today to the aft port of the Zvezda service module, joining the Soyuz MS-12 spacecraft that is linked to the Rosviet module on the Earth-facing port of the Russian segment. Morgan, Parmitano, and Sportsoff will join the current station residents on board, NASA astronauts Christina Cook and Nick Haig, and Russian cosmonaut and station commander Alexei Ovchinin, who arrived at the station aboard Soyuz MS-12 back on March 15th. Here in Houston, the team in mission control will be monitoring today's launch and receiving updates on the flight from their Russian counterparts. Flight Director Mary Lawrence is on console for today's launch, joined by the CAPCOM or spacecraft communicator, European Space Agency astronaut Andreas Mogensen, who will be talking directly to the station crew throughout the day. During the Soyuz's climb to orbit, tracking and telemetry will be downlinked to ground stations along the flight path and will be routed to the Russian Mission Control Center in the town of Karolyov on the outskirts of Moscow. You're looking at a view of that control room from a balcony camera. And throughout the day, we'll be taking questions from you on social media. If you have Soyuz launch questions you'd like answered during our broadcast, please submit them on Twitter using the hashtag AskNASA. I'm ready to copy all the parameters, guys. This is Soyuz lead. This is just one. With this day of historical significance so much on our minds, it is not lost on the crew members themselves who are set to launch a short time from now. Recently, during pre-launch activities at Red Square in Moscow, NASA's Drew Morgan, who's a colonel in the United States Army, took a moment to reflect on the significance of launching to the International Space Station on this day, the 50th anniversary of the landing of Apollo 11 at Tranquility Base. I think that it's a huge honor for both my crew, my Soyuz crew, as well as the entire crew of Expedition 60 that will be joining. And for us to be launching as an international crew to the International Space Station, it's a, just a beautiful way to commemorate that. And for us to here in the same year that NASA has laid out this very bold plan to return to the surface of the moon by 2024 as part of the Artemis program, this is just a, just a tremendous honor for us to be participating this way and to be carrying the torch forward of space exploration and continuing to, aspire, uh, to inspire generations both today and, and generations in the future. And for Luca Parmitano, a lieutenant colonel in the Italian Air Force, the Apollo program represented a dream to be fulfilled and the moon as a special destination to visit. With a live view of the Soyuz booster on the launch pad at the Baikonur Cosmodrome, the countdown standing at T-minus 51 minutes and counting before launch, liftoff again scheduled for 11.28 and 20 seconds a.m. Central Time, 9.28 and 20 seconds p.m. in Baikonur. All of the uh, pre-launch preparations, as we mentioned earlier, have gone by the book. Everything uh, proceeding on track uh, in about uh, 10 minutes. 
the retraction of the uh, gantry arms uh, will be completed uh, to expose uh, the Soyuz booster. Uh, for the final 45 minutes or so of the countdown, uh, the crew climbed on board uh, the Soyuz less than an hour ago, strapped inside uh, for their ride to orbit, conducted leak checks. The hatch to the Soyuz spacecraft is closed. As we mentioned uh, earlier, Luca Parmitano of uh, the European Space Agency, who is a lieutenant colonel in the Italian Air Force, in pre-launch activities at Red Square in Moscow a few weeks ago, before the crew departed for Baikonur, also offered his views on the significance of launching on this day, the 50th anniversary of Apollo 11's landing on the moon. I think my generation was affected by the Apollo program, despite the fact that we didn't see it happening. I was born about um, six years after uh, the, the last uh, the last moon uh, landing, uh, but it was such a momentous event, it changed humanity forever, that it created what I would call a collective memory. Um, growing up, I, I would I would see it in, in toys or uh, reports on, on TV documentaries. I could I would hear my parents talk about it and as a, as a matter of fact, for the first 10 or 12 years of my life, I was convinced that we were still going to the moon. I was not aware of the fact that we had stopped traveling to the moon long before I was born. So it gave me a sense that going to the moon and being an astronaut was something possible, despite the fact that I was born in Sicily, which is the, the periphery of Europe, far away from anything that is aerospace related. Uh, I think it affected me more ways than I can describe because it gave me it gave me that sense of possibility, which is what I would like to communicate when I talk to students and young kids that things are possible. That was Luca Parmitano, who was board engineer number one, seated in the left seat of the Soyuz MS-13. You see this view of the Launch Site 1, Yuri Gagarin's launch pad, where human spaceflight began 58 years ago, more than 58 years ago, with his launch on April 12th, 1961. Again, uh, just now beginning the retraction of the gantry uh, arms, the service structures that have surrounded uh, the Soyuz uh, spacecraft and its booster since uh, it rolled out to the launch pad uh, back on Thursday. The launch, uh, again, is just 47 and a half minutes from now at 11.28 and 20 seconds a.m. Central Time, 12.28 and 20 seconds p.m. Eastern Time. Here in Mission Control, uh, several uh, graphics have been uh, specially prepared for this 50th anniversary of Apollo 11's landing on the moon. On this front screen, you see uh, some of the uh, uh, insignias of the partner agencies of the International Space Station program, the Apollo 11 logo, Apollo 11's 50th anniversary, and the words, we came in peace for all mankind, the words on the plaque on the leg of the lunar module Eagle that landed at Tranquility Base 50 years ago today. And earlier today, uh, less than an hour ago, the legendary flight director who was on console in uh, the Apollo Mission Operations Control Room, one floor above us, Gene Kranz visited uh, Flight Director Mary Lawrence and uh, spacecraft communicator Andreas Mogensen on this 50th anniversary of the landing of Eagle at Tranquility Base, uh, accompanied by the Chief Flight Director Holly Ridings. This uh, truly a, a moment in history, Kranz wearing uh, his traditional white vest he is, his call sign was White Flight back during the day, visiting uh, Mary Lawrence, whose call sign is Infinity Flight on this 50th anniversary of the landing of Apollo 11, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin that occurred at 3.18 p.m. Central Time, 4.18 p.m. Eastern Time near the crater Moltke at Tranquility Base on the surface of the moon to rewrite humankind history.
And now a good view uh, once again from our cameras at the launch pad at Site 1 uh, at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan as the uh, gantry arms are retracting to expose the uh, Soyuz booster, the FG booster, and uh, the Soyuz MS-13 spacecraft. SAS launch escape system in arm. Okay, copy. And here's a view uh, inside uh, MS-13 at the bottom of your screen is Soyuz Commander Alexander Skvortsov of Roscosmos. To his left at the top of the screen is European Space Agency astronaut Luca Parmitano. Just out of the field of view to the right of Skvortsov is NASA astronaut Drew Morgan. Hanging over uh, Skvortsov is a uh, zero-G indicator, a toy duck that Skvortsov uh, has used as a mascot. Uh, to indicate uh, motion during powered flight and uh, the uh, absence of uh, gravity once uh, the Soyuz separates from the third stage of its booster into the uh, preliminary orbit for the chase to catch up to the International Space Station, the same mascot that Skvortsov flew on his two previous Soyuz flights. He is about to embark on his third flight into space, Parmitano, his second, Drew Morgan making his first flight into space today. We're approaching the 44 minute mark until launch. Again, the countdown proceeding smoothly on a sweltering midsummer night uh, at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan, about to begin a mission uh, to increase the crew size uh, from the from three to six aboard the International Space Station as uh, Expedition 60 crew members, Christina Cook, Nick Haig, and Alexei Ovchinin, the current station commander, await the arrival of three new crewmates later today. The day's activities in Baikonur began several hours ago. The crew was awakened at about 2.28 central time, 12.28 p.m. local time in Baikonur, some nine hours before launch. The crew members then participated in final pre-launch activities that began at their crew quarters in a time-honored tradition before departing for the launch pad. The three crew members observed the ritual of autographing the doors of the rooms they occupied at the Cosmonaut Hotel in the town of Baikonur. Panel into one and uh, case square, right case square on uh, integrated control panel two. Copy all. The crew received a uh, traditional blessing from an, a Russian Orthodox priest. God say, God keep you safe. And then uh, to the uh, traditional music, uh, around 5.28 a.m. Central Time, the crew departed the Cosmonaut Hotel and boarded a bus for their 40-minute ride to the integration and suit-up facility at Building 254 inside the Baikonur Cosmodrome. Again, an extremely hot day, uh, temperatures over the century mark in Baikonur. Thank you. A large throng of uh, family members and well-wishers uh, on hand to watch the crew uh, bid farewell as they uh, climbed aboard their bus uh, for the 40-minute uh, ride out uh, to the Cosmodrome and the suit-up facility at Site 254. Okay, guys. Bye. Good luck. We're with you. Oh. 
And the crew bus uh, departed uh, for the pseudo facility. Now you're looking inside uh, site 254 several hours ago as uh, the crew began its uh, suit up procedures. Uh, the Soyuz commander, Alexander Skvortsov, uh, suiting up inside his Sokol uh, launch and entry suit, uh, joined in that activity uh, by Luca Parmitano and Drew Morgan. You'll see in a moment uh, as the suits uh, were pressurized uh, to ensure that they were leak free. As uh, family members looked on across a protective pane of glass maintaining quarantine with the suit up having been completed about three and a half hours prior to launch. This is a video that was recorded uh, just a few hours ago at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. Alexander Skvortsov and uh, Luca Parmitano will be aboard the International Space Station until February 6th next year. A uh, slightly extended stay for Drew Morgan. He uh, will remain on board the International Space Station until April 1st of next year, returning home with Alex Kropochka and Jessica Mir of NASA, who will be launching on September 25th. You can see a, a view there of uh, some of the uh, large throng of family members, VIPs, and well-wishers uh, in the uh, suit-up facility, again, separated by that uh, protective pane of glass to maintain uh, medical quarantine. Morgan uh, set to begin the first flight for him. This will be the second flight into space for Luca Parmitano and the third coming up for Alexander Skvortsov. We'll be talking more about uh, these three crew members just a few moments from now. There you see uh, Drew Morgan uh, settling into uh, what essentially is a, uh, a replica of the seat that he is now strapped into aboard uh, the Soyuz MS-13 spacecraft uh, as the leak checks were conducted to ensure that his suit uh, is airtight and ready to support uh, the 8 minute 45 second flight to orbit. Countdown, by the way, proceeding on track. Launch schedule less than 36 and a half minutes from now. And you see uh, Luca Parmitano settling in for his uh, pressurization check of his Sokol launch and entry suit. And there's Drew Morgan as he uh, strode up uh, 
to uh, the glass uh, to have a chat with his family. Final opportunity to talk to them uh, before uh, heading to the launch pad. As you can see, uh, the crew in good spirits, very animated as they had uh, this opportunity to share uh, their thoughts about uh, their suit up, the final hours uh, before liftoff. So they're like size 55 because they go up on top of the spaceship and uh, we only use them once from here to the, to the bus and from the bus to the rocket and that's it. The check when we fly, it's like this. And uh, with their suits leak free and ready to support launch, the crew then exchanged uh, final thoughts with senior Russian, Russian, NASA, and European Space Agency managers. Uh, one final opportunity to receive expressions of good luck and Godspeed before departing for the launch pad. Chef, how are you? Everything is fine. Have a great flight. Have a successful flight. Uh, wishing you that everything goes as planned. I am glad to see you happy, focused, goal-oriented faces. We are confident uh, in your success. All the best. Uh, we have very warm feelings uh, about you, your mission in this flight. In fact, when you go outside the door, I'm sure you feel our warm feelings. <laughs> Seriously, you guys are well trained. Uh, you look very ready to go. Uh, we're looking forward to having you up on orbit and uh, accomplishing a great mission. Have some fun, and uh, we'll uh, see you back here in the soft landing in the not too distant future. All the best. We are really looking forward to your mission. It's an uh, impressive mission which you will do with the uh, EVAs and all of that stuff. So really we cross our fingers for your flight. Do the best out of it. So Alexander, you are the boss of these three, so please take care of them. Um, and uh, of course, Rupi also, all the best for you. So in medium, as an average, all of you have uh, two uh, flights already. So you have two, you have three, you have one. So in the meanwhile, you have two for all of you. Have a nice flight, and uh, Luca, you have already a new name. It's not Luca Pamicano, but Luna Pamicano. <laughs> Once again, maintaining tradition, the uh, crew members strode out of the Site 254 integration building toward Russian managers to declare one final time that they were ready for launch before boarding their bus. This was at about 8.30 a.m. Central Time for the ride to Launch Pad 1. The drive took about 25 minutes with an arrival at the pad just before 9 a.m. Central Time. of the transportation so his vehicle is ready for launch. Yo, good luck, all the best. Uh, please step back away from the bus. Step away from the bus. This uh, video now showing uh, the crew arriving at uh, launch pad one at the pad. The crew uh, 
You'll see in a moment, uh, climbed a few stairs and waved goodbye to well-wishers entering the elevator for the ride to the top of the Soyuz rocket to board their capsule, which they've now been aboard for the past two hours. Crew of MS-12 has arrived at the lunch bed. Should we take photographs? And the elevator carrying the crew uh, headed up to the 160-foot level where uh, the crew boarded the Soyuz vehicle. They are strapped in, of course, and ready for launch. Now back uh, with a live view of the Soyuz on the launch pad in Baikonur, the gantry arms have been retracted. We are now coming up on the T-minus 28-minute mark before launch. Lift off again scheduled for 11.28 and 20 seconds a.m. Central Time, 9.28 and 20 seconds p.m. in Baikonur. Fifty years ago, on this day, the world stood still and held its collective breath as NASA rewrote the history books, of course, by landing humans on the moon. That achievement came less than a decade after a call to action by President Kennedy. Join us now as we take a look back at how those words and the efforts that followed inspired and continue to inspire generations of space explorers. The exploration of space will go ahead, whether we join in it or not. And it is one of the great adventures of all time. And no nation which expects to be the leader of other nations can expect to stay behind. But why some say the moon? Why choose this as our goal? Why climb the highest mountain? Why 35 years ago fly the Atlantic? Why does Rice play Texas? We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade. That's one small step for man. Expedition 12 Commander Bill MacArthur with a greeting for his Expedition 11 counterpart. Because of the ingenuity, dedication, and entrepreneurial spirit reflected in this room and throughout the American space enterprise, since the end of Apollo 11, we've forged incredible breakthroughs in our technology that have allowed us to go further, more safely in space than ever before. Let me be clear. The first woman and the next man on the moon will both be a 
American astronauts. Once again, uh, a live view uh, just after sunset of the Soyuz MS-13, an extremely uh, warm night uh, at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in the Central Asian Desert. Today's launch marking the first flight into space for NASA's Drew Morgan, the second for Luca Parmitano of the European Space Agency, and the third for Roscosmos cosmonaut and Soyuz MS-13 commander Alexander Skvortsov. With that in mind and a look at the crew, let's take a moment to learn more about Drew Morgan. NASA's next astronaut to fly in space. I think I often describe myself as a soldier, a physician, and an astronaut. The pursuit of those happened in that order. And one of the earliest memories I have is of always wanting to be in the military, of wanting to be a soldier. Quite a history of uh, military service in our family. Both of my grandparents, uh, my, my father was an Air Force officer, and I also remember my parents telling me a story about my great uncle Clink, Harry McClinic, who was a paratrooper in World War II. He was in the 101st Airborne Division and jumped at Normandy on D-Day and then jumped in Operation Market Garden in Holland. And that was the first time I had ever heard of the concept of a paratrooper or what it meant to be an airborne soldier. So when I later decided, I graduated from high school and I went to West Point, I knew that I was very interested in this concept of being an airborne soldier. At West Point, they had a parachute team called the Black Knights. Yeah, so I made the parachute team, and, um, and that became uh, one of the central activities of my remaining three and a half years at West Point. In addition to academics, uh, after class, we jumped most days of the week. But then we were also a demonstration team, so we jumped in football games. Um, also, while I was a cadet, I went through military basic airborne course, which taught military static line parachuting, specifically the parachute aspect of it. If I go back to the time when I was a cadet, my teammates that I was selected with became my best friends in the world and continue to be to this day. And that camaraderie that we had and that dependency we had on each other, making sure that we were skilled in the aircraft, skilled in the air, our lives depended on each other to do uh, safety checks of each other, that type of camaraderie is something that I feel now in the astronaut corps with my astronaut colleagues as well. I think about how 20 years ago I was developing those skills uh, at an early age and didn't even know it. I'm Andrew Morgan and I'm a soldier, a physician, and an astronaut. Born in Morgantown, West Virginia, to a military family, Drew Morgan moved between California, New York, Texas, Great Britain, and Delaware over the course of his childhood. He graduated from high school in Delaware, earned a Bachelor of Science degree in Environmental Engineering at the U.S. Military Academy at West Point, and then earned a doctorate in medicine from the Uniformed Services University of the Health Sciences in Bethesda, Maryland. He is an emergency physician in the U.S. Army, with a specialization in primary care sports medicine. He holds ratings as a military flight surgeon and as a special operations diving medical officer. His military career includes service in elite special operations units in Washington and in Iraq, Afghanistan, and Africa. Morgan, along with current station residents Nick Haig and Christina Cook, was selected to become an astronaut as part of NASA's 21st astronaut class known by the nickname the Eight Balls. Together, they participated in a two-year, highly specialized training program, completing that training in July of 2015. Morgan, Haig, and Cook, along with Luca Parmitano, are all part of what will be the space station's spacewalking teams for the next several months. 
In fact, if all goes as planned, Morgan will be joining Nick Hague next month to install the next international docking adapter to the Harmony module during a spacewalk and is slated to join Parmitano for a complex series of spacewalks later this year to repair and refurbish the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer, which was delivered to the station in 2011. In addition to being an accomplished soldier, physician, and soon-to-be space traveler, there's a lot more to astronaut Drew Morgan. As we head into the final minutes of the launch countdown, let's take a look once again at this unique individual. The clock has started. Roger. What's your favorite movie? Band of Brothers. Your favorite food? Anything spicy. Favorite color? Olive drab. Are you a morning person or a night person? Definitely a morning person. I'm not demonstrating that very well now, but yes, I am a morning person. <laughs> What's your favorite ice cream flavor? Mint chocolate chip. Is there one thing you have in your fridge all the time? Milk. What accomplishment are you most proud of? My kids. Who's the person that makes you laugh the most? My wife. What's your most memorable career moment? Graduating from uh, Ranger School and being promoted to major on the same day. If you could have one superpower only, what would it be? Time travel. What's your favorite pizza topic? Lots and lots of cheese. Your favorite animal? Armadillo. Favorite dance move? Air guitar. Who inspires you? My dad. What would you like to be remembered for? Being a good husband and father. What advice would you give to your younger self? Be a good team player. What would be a good theme song for your life? Live It Well by Switchfoot. If you could spend one day on Mars, what would you do there for fun? Take pictures. What is a life goal you plan to achieve this year? Come home safely from space. Born in Paterno, Italy, European Space Agency astronaut Luca Parmitano is a lieutenant colonel in the Italian Air Force. After completing a bachelor's degree in political science at the University of Naples, Federico II, in 1999, he graduated from the Italian Air Force Academy in 2000. The following year, he completed basic flight training with the U.S. Air Force involved in European-NATO joint jet pilot training at Shepard Air Force Base in Texas. He continued his training, completing coursework in Germany in 2002, in Italy in 2003, in Belgium in 2005, and then completing a master's degree in experimental flight test engineering in July of 2009. Parmitano flew the AMX aircraft with the 13th Group, 32nd Wing in Amendola, Italy, from 2001 to 2007, obtaining all aircraft qualifications during that time. In 2007, he was selected by the Italian Air Force to become a test pilot. He has logged more than 2,000 hours of flight time. He has qualified on more than 20 types of military airplanes and helicopters and has flown over 40 types of aircraft. Selected as an ESA astronaut in 2009, Parmitano was assigned as a flight engineer to the Italian Space Agency's first long-duration mission on the International Space Station, flying in 2013 aboard Soyuz TMA-09M to the station as a member of the Expedition 3637 crew. He took part in a pair of spacewalks, logging a combined total of seven hours and 39 minutes outside the station. He will take over command of the International Space Station from current Commander Alexei Ovchinin in October, becoming the third European astronaut and the first Italian to do so. He is board engineer number one for today's launch. To the left of the Soyuz commander, Roscosmos cosmonaut Alexander Skvortsov, who is returning to space for the third time today. A retired colonel in the Russian Air Force, Skvortsov was born in the Shulkova Moscow region in Russia. After graduating from high school and then from the Stavropol Air Force Pilot and Navigator School as pilot engineer, he went on to graduate from the military Red Banner Zhukov Air Defense Academy in 1997 as a navigator and operational tactical fighter defense aviator. He served as a pilot, a senior pilot, and an air flight commander. Skvartsov enlisted into the Astronaut and Cosmonaut Corps of the Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center in 1997, becoming a member of the 12th Cosmonaut Class and becoming a test cosmonaut in November of 1999. Qualified as a cosmonaut instructor, he is qualified as both a diver and a powered paragliding instructor, having performed over 500 jumps. In 2010, he graduated from the Russian Academy of Public Administration with a degree in law. He is a veteran of two long-duration space flights, both to the International Space Station. In 2010, he was the commander of Soyuz TMA-18, an Expedition 23 flight engineer, and the station's Expedition 24 commander. 
His second space flight took place in 2014, once again taking on the role of commander of Soyuz TMA-12M and working aboard the space station as an Expedition 3940 flight engineer. During his mission, he performed two spacewalks, accumulating a total of 12 hours and 33 minutes outside the station. As mentioned earlier, he is serving as Soyuz MS-13 commander today and will be a flight engineer during Expeditions 60 and 61. As we celebrate the Apollo 11 anniversary today, as we've mentioned uh, several times earlier in this broadcast and inspired by the Apollo missions, Drew Morgan described the significance and the symbolism of his crew's Expedition 60 crew patch during a recent crew news conference. Expedition 60 patch, there are elements of that patch that uh, commemorate the Apollo 11 moon landing. If you are familiar with the Apollo 11 patch, bears some resemblance. Uh, rather than the uh, moon in the foreground, we have the Earth in the foreground and the moon in the background, and the L constellation for the 50 years, and then the Eagle constellation, uh, just like the Eagle on the Apollo 11 patch. So, you know, the patch designers and the crew came together and really thought this was a great idea, and very similar to the Apollo 11 patch. Of course, there are no names represented on this patch, which was an important element for us as well, uh, that to really embody that sense that this was uh, an accomplishment of the world and not one single country. And uh, we're back with our live coverage of the launch of Morgan Parmitano and Skvortsov. And of course, on the launch pad of the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan, the Soyuz MS-13 stands on the flood-lit launch pad with liftoff scheduled just under 14 minutes from now. The Soyuz rocket stands 162 feet tall, weighs 680,000 pounds, and consists of the Soyuz MS-13 inside a protective shroud at the top, and the three-stage Soyuz FG booster below. The uh, Soyuz uh, spacecraft uh, that will take uh, our trio of crew members to orbit today was mated to its booster, and the three main stages were joined together on Wednesday. Just 24 hours later, on Thursday, the Soyuz rocket began its trek to the launch pad right on time at 7 a.m. Baikonur time, maintaining tradition, arriving less than two hours later, where it was raised to its vertical position for final pre-launch preparations. The uh, Soyuz is now, of course, poised for launch with its three crew members on board. The Soyuz spacecraft sitting high above the three stages of the Soyuz booster, which uses kerosene and liquid oxygen as the propellant. At engine ignition, the Soyuz's engines will come up to flight speed, the launch pad hold-down arms will retract, and the booster rocket will be on its way. The first stage engines and liquid fuel strap-on boosters will burn for about 1 minute 58 seconds as the Soyuz arcs out to the northeast from the Baikonur Cosmodrome on a trajectory designed to catch up to the International Space Station six hours later. Just before first stage separation, the vehicle's launch escape tower will be jettisoned, followed seconds later by the jettisoning of the four strap-on first stage boosters. About a half minute later, the clamshell fairing around the upper stage of the booster will separate, exposing the Soyuz MS-13 for the first time as the Soyuz continues its trek uphill. The second stage of the Soyuz rocket will burn until the 4 minute 57 second mark when the third stage will ignite a so-called hot stage technique that precedes the separation of the second stage. The third stage will continue to fire until 8 minutes 45 seconds after launch when it too will shut down, leading to Soyuz spacecraft separation. That will be followed within seconds by the deployment of the Soyuz MS-13 solar arrays and navigational antennas. At this point, the Soyuz and its three-man crew will be in its preliminary orbit for the chase to catch up to and dock to the International Space Station. And that Soyuz spacecraft is scheduled to dock to the aft port of the space station's Zvezda service module later today, four orbits after launch. Docking is scheduled for 5.51 p.m. Central Time, 6.51 p.m. Eastern Time. Now just 11 minutes until launch, down uh, at the Baikonur Cosmodrome, a large uh, group of NASA, S Russian, and European uh, representatives is at uh, the Cosmodrome, a short distance from the launch pad. And with them, NASA Public Affairs Officer Dan Hewitt, who is there to provide an update on activities there. Dan? 
Hello, Rob. Coming to you from a very sweltering Kazakhstan where temperatures throughout the week's activities have climbed into the triple digits but haven't dampened the excitement to see this launch one bit. Friends and family from our crew members, along with senior program officials, including NASA International Space Station Program Manager Kirk Shireman, Roscosmos Head Dmitry Rogozin, and ESA Director General Jan Werner, are all on location to support the launch of this international crew, taking flight 50 years to the day after Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin put humanity's first footprints on the moon. Morgan Skortsoff and Parmitano will have no shortage of activities once they arrive, with their expeditions slated to be jam-packed with more than 260 science investigations, a steady stream of visiting spacecraft, and upwards of a dozen spacewalks, including some of the most ambitious forays into the vacuum of space ever conceived that will see Morgan and Parmitano work to extend the life of the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer, a massive particle physics experiment looking to unlock the secrets behind the origin of our universe. For now, though, I'll send it back to you, Rob, and Mission Control Houston, as we count down to liftoff here in Baikonur. From descent module, ESA, on camera. Back with a live view of the uh, Soyuz on the launch pad, the countdown approaching the T-minus nine-minute mark. Inside uh, the crew cabin, uh, the crew is making final preparations for launch. A good view of Drew Morgan, uh, his face partially obscured by the zero-G uh, mascot that he is uh, batting around uh, in a playful manner. At the lower right-hand corner of your screen is Soyuz Commander Alexander Skvortsov. Just a few minutes ago, the, com the crew completed uh, their final suit leak checks. Uh, the uh, testing of uh, the descent module in which the three crew members are strapped inside is now complete. The uh, spacecraft's uh, gyros are in flight readiness and flight recorders have now been activated. Just eight and a half minutes away from launch, pre-launch operations nearly complete at the Baikonur Cosmodrome. Uh, launch controllers at the blockhouse in Baikonur reporting everything is in readiness for liftoff. At the time of launch, uh, the International Space Station will be flying 254 miles over southern Russia, flying between Kazakhstan and Mongolia some 646 miles ahead of the Soyuz as it climbs off the launch pad. The uh, Soyuz will be uh, launching into a narrow corridor of just 34.2 degrees, basically uh, the moment where the Earth's rotation carries the Baikonur Cosmodrome into the plane of the station's orbit, very much like driving a car onto an on-ramp of a freeway to expedite uh, the Soyuz's four-orbit six-hour trek to catch up to the International Space Station later today. We're now at the seven and a half minute mark before launch. At this point in the countdown, the Soyuz's first and second stage engines uh, have been uh, declared ready for launch, telemetry being received from the rocket, indicating that all primary and backup systems are set to support liftoff. And a view uh, from the other camera inside of the descent module, uh, squarts off at the bottom of your screen, at the top of your screen, European Space Agency astronaut Luca Parmitano, ready to begin his second flight into space. Here in Mission Control in Houston, uh, Flight Director Mary Lawrence has pulled all of her flight controllers. The International Space Station is ready uh, to uh, accept uh, the arrival of the three crew members later today. Lawrence on console, joined by European Space Agency astronaut and spacecraft communicator Andreas Mogensen. Uh, the feed that you're watching on NASA TV is also being uplinked to the crew on board the International Space Station, now at the T-minus six and a half minute mark before launch. Uchos, this is launch late. One minute readiness, everything is nominal. Uh, the control is on board, and the launch report will be provided. Copy all this is just one. Everything is nominal on board. We are feeling well. That report through an interpreter, uh, the, uh, the words of Alexander Skvartsov saying the crew feels well. They are ready for launch. By the way, a launch key has now been inserted in the launch bunker. This is a real key that transitions the launch sequence into its automatic mode.
And you're hearing uh, some of the music that uh, is piped in from the blockhouse in Baikonur to uh, relax the crew in the final minutes before liftoff. This is a traditional activity. Launch key inserted. Coming up on the five minute mark before launch, the blockhouse in Baikonur reporting the range is clear, the Soyuz rocket ready to begin its journey uphill. T minus five minutes and counting. Onboard systems now are being switched to uh, onboard control. The commander's cockpit displays have been activated, and uh, the crew has closed their helmets, putting them on suit oxygen. T minus four minutes, 28 seconds as we speak. The International Space Station now flying directly over the Baikonur Cosmodrome. Combustion chamber, nitrogen purge. The fuel lines and other elements of the rocket engines now being purged with nitrogen to fireproof them by removing fuel and oxidizer vapors. Inside four minutes before launch, everything proceeding on track. The next uh, major activity will be the drain back of uh, excess propellant to make sure the Soyuz booster is at the proper weight for liftoff. Groundboard measurement system is activated, but on two commands, copy. Less than three and a half minutes before launch. Dyson nitrogen to the vehicle is terminated. Everything is well on board. Copy, Utiosi. T minus three minutes and counting. Just seconds away from the uh, booster's fuel tanks being pressurized for flight. This will optimize the flow of fuel and help to add structural support to the rocket as it sits on the launch pad. Booster propellant tank pressurization initiated. Coming up on the T-minus two-minute mark on the 50th anniversary of humanity's first footsteps on the moon. T-minus two minutes and counting. Coming up on the termination of the ground propellant feed at the one minute mark, the vehicle will be placed on internal power. T minus 90 seconds. The uh, first of two ground umbilicals will retract uh, from the side of the vehicle at about the T-minus 35 second mark. That will uh, initiate auto sequence start. T-minus 50 seconds. Mm -hmm. 
Vehicle to internal power, ground propellant seat. First of the two umbilicals now retracting. We are ready for the launch. T minus 30 seconds. The uh, second umbilical now retracting, initiating auto sequence start. We have main engine ignition, engines and turbo pumps up to flight speed. Five, four, three, two, one. Engine turbo pump and flight. And liftoff. Fifty years after a small step for man, the Soyuz rocket and its multinational crew take a giant leap off the launch pad, bound for the International Space Station. Good first stage performance. The Soyuz delivering 930,000 pounds of thrust from its four boosters and single engine. The nighttime sky is creating a halo-like effect as the Soyuz arcs to the northeast away from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in pursuit of the International Space Station. Forty seconds. The spacecraft, the vehicle are nominal and they're stable. Copy. Good reports from the blockhouse in Baikonur, punching a hole through the clouds overhead. Good engine performance being reported. 60 seconds in, your pitch roll are nominal. Copy. One minute, 10 seconds into the flight. Alexander Skvortsov reports the crew is feeling well. Now going through the period of maximum dynamic pressure, leaving a contrail. The the Soyuz traveling almost 3,000 miles an hour, 15 miles in altitude, 10 miles downrange from the Baikonur Cosmodrome. One minute, 45 seconds after launch. All uh, structural parameters reported to be in excellent shape. A good view inside uh, MS-13. Alexander Skvortsov at the bottom of your screen, at the top of your screen, Luca Parmitano as we stand by for first stage separation. Yes, the jettison is confirmed. First stage separation confirmed. confirmed. Third stage separation is confirmed. Affirmative. The vehicle is stable. Copy. The Soyuz now traveling uh, 4,500 miles an hour, 29 miles in altitude, 29 miles downrange from the Baikonur Cosmodrome. Two and a half minutes into the flight, all structural parameters reported to be in excellent shape. Second stage uh, performance uh, reported nominal. The launch shroud has now been jettisoned, and now we're seeing a view from a camera on the second stage of the uh, Soyuz rocket. We will no longer see in-cabin views. Uh, that uh, external camera activated by Alexander Skvortsov uh, from a uh, button on his control panel. But a great view of looking down uh, the Soyuz uh, booster. Again, this view from a second stage camera on the Soyuz rocket. Three minutes, 15 seconds into the flight, everything proceeding normally. And 20 seconds. The second stage engines are operating nominally, and everything is nominal on board. We're feeling well. Two hundred and twenty seconds. The flight is nominal. Copy. Everything is nominal on board. Four minutes into the flight, uh, almost halfway through powered flight, as the Soyuz MS-13 and its trio uh, of crew uh, continues its uh, flight uphill. 
and the beginning of a six-hour journey to the International Space Station, a spectacular view from a second-stage camera on the Soyuz booster. The Soyuz traveling uh, 8,500 miles an hour, 91 miles in altitude, 248 miles downrange from the Baikonur Cosmodrome. Copy. Everything is nominal on board. Second stage separation is confirmed. And you see uh, the aft skirt uh, from the uh, second stage separating. Second stage separation is complete, uh, continuing to uh, receive downlink video from the Soyuz booster at the five minute, 15 second mark into the flight. Three and a half minutes of powered flight remaining. The Soyuz being powered on the uh, singular uh, capability of its third stage engine. All parameters are reported in excellent shape. Nominal on the board, we are feeling well. Three hundred and thirty seconds in, the third stage engines are operating nominally. The Soyuz now traveling over 10,000 miles an hour, 111 miles in altitude, 417 miles downrange from the Baikonur Cosmodrome. 350 seconds. The flight is nominal. And by the way, at the time of uh, third stage shutdown and orbital insertion, the ISS will be uh, flying over the far eastern coast of Russia near the Sea of Japan, almost 2,500 statute miles ahead of the Soyuz as it begins its uh, chase to catch up to the station in earnest. Six minutes, 20 seconds into the flight, two and a half minutes of powered flight remaining. Two hundred and ninety seconds. The launch vehicle parameters are nominal. Copy all. Everything is nominal on board. The crew is feeling well. All the parameters are nominal. As you can hear, uh, Alexander Skvortsov continuing to provide uh, progress reports uh, to the uh, Launch Control Center in Baikonur at the time of third stage shutdown and spacecraft separation. Uh, control of the uh, Soyuz's flight to the International Space Station will be reverted back to the flight control team at the Russian Mission Control Center in Koryov on the outskirts of Moscow. Seven minutes, 15 seconds into the flight. The Soyuz traveling 13,200 miles an hour, 124 miles in altitude, 715 miles downrange from the Baikonur Cosmodrome. 440 seconds in, the vehicle is stable. Copy. Everything is nominal here. Good reports continue uh, to be received back uh, from the blockhouse in Baikonur. Good structural parameters. The third stage engine uh, continues to burn as advertised as we approach the eight minute mark into the flight. 470 seconds in, third stage engines are operating nominally. Copy all. Everything is nominal on board. We are feeling well. Four hundred and ninety seconds. The vehicle is stable. Copy all. Everything is nominal here. We are feeling well. Eight and a half minutes into the flight. About 15 seconds away from third stage shutdown and spacecraft separation. Your pitch roll are nominal. Copy. We are standing by for KO and everything is nominal on board. And we have third stage shutdown and separation. Third stage separation is confirmed. Congratulations on the nominal orbital insertion. Mission Control Moscow is here. Vyacheslav is here. Congratulations again. 
Copy all. Thank you very much. And you can see uh, the Soyuz solar arrays beginning to unfurl as planned. Mission Control Moscow, how copy? Loud and clear, how us? Loud and clear as well. And we have confirmation of a perfect solar array deploy. All navigational antennas have also been deployed. A textbook launch for Soyuz MS-13, three new space explorers en route to the International Space Station, 50 years to the day that Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin landed on the moon. Okay, we are on page 35, and please perform all those steps. And we are standing by for the readings from the flight engineer for page 36. Moscow, this is Uchos 2. And are you ready to copy the first reading? Yes, we are. SR pressure, 7, 9, 8. BO pressure is 8, 1, 3. STL pressure is 8, 44. Copy all. And the uh, RDR will need to go through the KRL. Actually, it's complete already. Copy. I'm deactivating KDU pressurization. Copy. Do you want me to uh, give you Form 3 data? Yes, we are ready. 17, decimal 1, 18, 17, 19, 2, 6, 6, 20, 2, decimal 0, 21, 1, decimal 7, 22, 3, 2, 7, 23, 3, 2, 9, 24, 17, decimal 3, 25, 17, decimal 7, 26, 2, 6, 6, the prop is 8, 7, is 8, 7, 8, copy all. Okay. Course one test is underway. Copy. Uh, did you send the command from input two? Yes, I did send it. This is Mission Control Houston. You're looking at a view from the uh, balcony camera overlooking the cavernous uh, flight control room of the Russian Mission Control Center in Korolyov outside Moscow. Drew Morgan, Luca Parmitano, and Alexander Skvortsov well on their way to catch up to the International Space Station after a flawless launch from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. Liftoff occurring on time at 11.28 and 20 seconds a.m. Central Time, 12.28 and 20 seconds p.m. Eastern Time, 9.28 and 20 seconds p.m. at the Baikonur Cosmodrome about an hour after sunset. Soyuz MS-13 lifted off uh, perfectly, arced out to the northeast and began its uh, trek, an eight minute, 45 second journey to uh, its preliminary orbit. Soyuz uh, is now well on its way to uh, reaching the International Space Station later.
today. All of its systems in great shape. And Alexander Skvortsov, the Soyuz commander, reporting that uh, his crewmates, Drew Morgan and Luca Parmitano and himself, all are in excellent shape. So with that, uh, let's take a look ahead at what lies uh, on the horizon for NASA TV programming coming up, Soyuz-related. At uh, 3 p.m. Central Time, 4 p.m. Eastern Time, uh, we'll have a video file, a post-launch video file that will include all of today's launch activities and post-launch interviews that are being conducted at the Baikonur Cosmodrome. Our docking coverage, rendezvous and docking of the Soyuz to the aft port of the Zvezda service module will begin at 5 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. That will lead to a docking at 5.51, actually 5.51 p.m. Uh, Central Time, 6.51 p.m. Eastern Time. There will be uh, then our hatch opening coverage and the welcoming ceremony uh, that will ensue uh, with congratulatory calls from family and friends uh, in Baikonur. Our hatch opening coverage uh, to begin at 7 p.m. Central Time tonight. Hatch opening planned at 7.50 p.m. Thank you very much. Thank you. We hope everything will go smoothly. We are sure of that. Good luck. Godspeed. Thank you. You just heard uh, congratulatory words uh, radioed up to Alexander Skvortsov and his crewmates aboard the, the Soyuz from the chief flight director. Uh, at the Russian Mission Control Center of uh, Vladimir Solovia. Skvartsov reporting that the crew is in great shape, the Soyuz uh, on its way, uh, with a series of pre-programmed burns over the next uh, several hours on a fast-track four-orbit rendezvous to reach the International Space Station. With well, that, we'll uh, wrap up our launch coverage, a perfect launch on this 50th anniversary of the landing of humans on the moon. Uh, as uh, Soyuz MS-13, Drew Morgan, Luca Parmitano, and Alexander Skvortsov in their preliminary orbit en route to a docking to the International Space Station later today. We'll be back on the air with you at 5 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Eastern Time with our rendezvous and docking coverage. In the meantime, from all of us here at NASA on this historic day in human spaceflight history, we wish you all the best on this Saturday. This is Mission Control Houston. <laughs>